Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oops. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I've been letting that title of genius sink in for a while, and it's made me totally stressed out. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, it's great to be here this morning, and I'm going to start with a confession, and that's. Uh, it's not going to come as a surprise to, or a revelation to those of you who know me, but uh, I'm not a genius. So we'll get that right off the, the, uh, the bat. Uh, but I believe in genius, and I've seen genius, and I appreciate genius, and I've learned that while genius is important to success, it is not essential. There are always ways we can tap into genius without actually having to be one. There are ways we can leverage genius by using the work of great artists and great entrepreneurs, great musicians to inspire us and help us move forward as a community and as a society. So this morning I want to share a little bit about my story uh, and how I found the motivation to take risks, overcome fear, including speaking, uh, try new things and hopefully find a way to make my little corner of the universe, which is Delray, just a little bit better. So first, let me say that I'm inspired by genius every day. For me, the Beatles, Bruce Springsteen, Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Maya Angelou, Joni Mitchell, Frank Lloyd Wright, geniuses whose body of work inspires us to dream, motivates us to strive and aspire. But even the geniuses uh, can't do it alone. And that's my message this morning. If you are a genius, you still need a team. Steve Jobs had Steve Wozniak and thousands of employees who work at malls, at genius bars at malls, uh, to make Apple what it is. Mark Zuckerberg connected two billion people on Facebook, but he needed Sheryl Sandberg to scale, scale his platform. Lincoln put together a team of rivals to win the Civil War and preserve the Union. And even Bruce Springsteen has the E Street Band, or as he describes them, and I quote, the heart-stopping, pants-dropping, house-rocking, earthquake, booty-shaking, Viagra-taking, love-making, legendary E Street Band. <laughs> Which, by the way, now includes Delray resident Max Weinberg, uh, who we invited here today. He's on the road, otherwise he would have been here. He's been to the Arts Garage. He's become a friend of this community and a friend of this city. No man or woman is an island. Uh, genius or no genius, nobody can do it alone. The best way we can move forward as a culture is to harness the power of people to build community. There's genius ready to be tapped, created, and deployed anywhere at any time for anything if we take the time to build community. There's no problem we can't solve, no challenge we can't overcome if we build community. I believe that if we cultivate genius, nurture talent, and encourage aspiration, we can move mountains. We did it in Delray Beach. I've seen it done elsewhere. It happens in business and it happens in organizations too. To capture genius is to embrace the magic of the crowd, to be open to ideas and imagination. And consequently, there is a price to pay if we don't engage and make connections. If we tell people to go elsewhere to pursue their dreams, we will lose not only our present, but we will squander our future too. Genius unites. It brings people together around ideas and visions of a better future. Genius incites. The ideas that you have to fight the hardest for are often the ones you're going to be remembered for. And I want to repeat that because it's a, it's a big concept. The ideas that you have to fight the hardest for are often the ones you'll be remembered for. Everything that people now love about Delray Beach faced initial and often strong resistance. I have the scars, and there's a few people in the audience here that have the scars uh, to attest to that. But if you believe in your vision, if you persevere over time, you will make real and lasting change. Genius also excites. It makes you feel alive with possibility and hope, but genius can't take root if it's isolated and alone. This is actually working, which is really cool. Uh, 
I attended my first creative morning last month in uh, Boca Raton, and frankly, I was blown away. Um, Connor Lynch and I walked in to that meeting. I didn't know what to expect, um, and I was in particular need that morning of community and inspiration. We live in a really challenging world, and I know that's not a revelation uh, either. The news can be heartbreaking, and it has been the last uh, week, it's been the last years, and overwhelming. The personalities we confront on a daily basis can defeat, deflate even the most optimistic people uh, among us. So I walked into Creative Mornings feeling a little lost, uh, as if it's sea without navigation, I felt lonely and, and, uh, and exhausted that day, which I think all of us feel from time to time. Um, I think we're living in significant times. Uh, our anchors are being ripped from the ground. Our world is moving so fast that I'm not sure we are always aware of what's happening. Everything is so fast these days. It can leave us feeling unsure and unsettled, often about the things we were certain about. And then I met you. Uh, and the sense of community that I felt in that room awakened something inside me. Uh, it, it awakened my belief in community and in leadership and in entrepreneurship, the three pillars of life outside of my family and friends. There is power and beauty in what you are building here with Creative Mornings. Your inclusiveness, your openness, your energy, and your warmth not only impressed me, but it really moved me. There is genius in what you have tapped into. And in my mind, it shows leadership, it builds community, and it nurtures creative entrepreneurs. And our world needs what you are creating now more than ever. So I feel at home here with you. And this morning, I want to share a little of my story and some thoughts on genius and, and how it relates to your work and our world. One of my favorite quotes about genius is the following by moral philosopher Bernard Williams. Talent is a flame, genius is a fire. I'm impressed by talent, but I am awed by genius. I am also inspired by genius, as I think most of us are. Genius is what moves us, it stops us cold, it makes us pay attention. And we are, when you are exposed to genius, it starts a fire and it changes the world. For me, genius is a step or two or three beyond excellence. It's something you feel, it hits you, it stops you cold and it makes you reach for the railings because once you see it, you can't go back. I showed you that slide, which is, uh, that song is a movie, it's a novel, it's, it's the American story, it's called Backstreets, it goes on and on. I've listened to that at decibels that uh, I don't recommend, <laughs> and it's gotten me through some things. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm not an, a genius, but I think we have the ability to tap into genius and in some ways a responsibility to do, to do so. Um, I show you that clip at Springsteen who was 25 when he wrote this anthem, which was part of a, a, an album of anthems, because there was something about him uh, that spoke to me on a visceral level. Uh, moments in his songs that, that, that hit me, uh, deep in my soul and, and listening to him made me want to go out and do something. Uh, to do something of significance with my life. To do something bigger than to break out of, of, of the shell. Uh, I wish I could write like Steinbeck I, or think like Seth Godin or, or scale like Mark Zuckerberg or write songs like Bruce, but I can't. Still, I'm here to say that accomplishment and achievement are possible if we dare to try if we allow ourselves to experience life, if we don't play it safe and succumb to fear. I use the geniuses that move me as fuel. A, a great song gives me faith in the future and great writing makes me want to write so that maybe I could taste, if just for a moment or a millisecond, something ma magical. So we should seek genius, that magic in our businesses and in our communities. It's there to be discovered and awakened. I'm, it's waiting there for us to be leveraged and turned into something positive and special. And that's what we did in this city by reaching out to the stakeholders of this community and asking them what they wanted to see their city become. It was the grassroots telling the grass tops what they wanted to see. And when we did that, 
through visioning and, and civic engagement, we tapped into the genius that was out there in this city, and we were able to move mountains as a result. We're in an example of, of this. This was a parking lot. Uh, this was, and then this was an empty building until the, the idea was, let's create a creative space around this. This kind of magic is available to us as entrepreneurs and artists if we reach out to our audience, if we devote ourselves to making their lives better. So how did I in get involved in this kind of work? I have really no idea. Uh, <laughs> this is a picture of me on my first day of college. I'm 18 or 19. I'm away from home for the first time uh, in a place called Oswego, New York, which was a world away from my Long Island roots. Um, this young man, who I barely recognize as me, I wish I could look like that again, uh, <laughs> has no idea what's in store for him. I had never heard of Delray Beach, had never dreamed of being a mayor of a city, and I had never met a person from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And yet, those three things, Delray serving as a mayor and marrying a woman from Pittsburgh, would completely shape my life in magical ways that I could not have fathomed way back when. This was probably on the way to some sort of party with a keg or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I moved to Florida after experiencing uh, several Oswego winters, which, by the way, last 11, 11 months a year. Um, I, I came here to be a newspaper reporter uh, and trade endless winters for endless summers. My best friend lived here at the time, and I thought it would be nice to be in the sunshine. And then I fell in love with this little city because I saw its potential, and it would be cheaper to live here than Boca. Uh, <laughs> I saw its possibilities, and I was attracted by the leadership that was here and by the vision of just was starting to take shape at the time. At first, I wrote about it for the newspaper, and then I decided to help make it happen. And we did. We got a lot done. It was a team effort. It was fun. It was thrilling. It was also exhausting at times and, thres uh, and stressful. But a group of people worked together over a period of years because they believed in this place. They believed in each other, and they believed in the value of creating a better future for ourselves and for our children. What a concept. Why can't we embrace that philosophy for our country? find a unifying vision and work together to bring it to life. If I were a genius, I probably would have had a solid plan for my life based on what that genius was. John Lennon knew he wanted to be a musician from the time he was a young boy. Scientists and engineers are fueled by their interests. Me, I, I was trying to figure it out on the fly. I always enjoyed writing, but I also knew that I was never going to be a Hemingway or a Pulitzer Prize winner. But I discovered that I enjoyed people that I loved to connect, and that I had a passion for cities and an entrepreneurial streak, and so Delray resonated with me. I saw in this little place a chance to be a civic entrepreneur, and inspired by local leadership, I decided to run for office about a year after I lost my mother to cancer. She died at a very young age, and I saw how life was fragile and that tomorrow was not guaranteed. And so I made a conscious decision to say yes to things, no longer say maybe someday. Even though I was afraid, way outside my comfort zone, and not really sure that I had anything to give or any leadership skills. But Delray's formula, its secret sauce of involving people, spoke to me. I also saw that it got results and that in small cities you can make big strides pretty quickly if you want to if you harness the genius and talent in your community. It's a simple concept. There's nothing in that formula that requires you to be Albert Einstein. But there was genius in the simplicity of engaging the community's stakeholders, forging a vision for a sustainable future, and having the courage and the fortitude to stick with it. Despite the roadblocks, despite the naysayers, despite the people who tell you that what you want to do is impossible. We heard all the excuses. The instant you announce an idea, you can count on the critics to whack you over the head. So what do you do when you counter, encounter resistance? My advice is listen. Maybe they have something to teach you. Listen to the critics and then defy them. 
dig deep and make it happen. Or as Steve Martin advises, be so good they can't ignore you. And I realized in preparing for this creative morning that while I'm not a genius, I was surrounded by a few. Talented leaders, incredible entrepreneurs, amazing public servants, and together we captured this genius and we built a place and a vibe that made us fall in love, encouraged us to take risks on businesses and projects, and compelled us to keep going when the going got rough. And we all know it always gets rough. I kept going through the loss of my mother, who was my biggest champion, the, the, the end of a marriage, a terrible accident that almost took my father, uh, through hurricanes that exhausted me, controversies nearly every week, protests, and the shooting of a 15-year-old that challenged all of us. We kept going. And because we created community, because we harnessed the genius of our citizens, we survived it all. Whether, whatever was thrown at us, we, we thrived. My adventures in local politics opened up my world. I went from a journalist, which I think is a noble profession, to an elected official, which should be a noble profession, to business and entrepreneurship, where I had been able to apply the lessons that I've learned over the last 30 years. And that's how those of us who aren't genius can find success. Finding good people, understanding that you are never the smartest person in the room, and if you are, find another room, and by committing yourself to lifelong learning and experimentation. I'm as curious and aspirational today as I have ever been, maybe more so, because in eight days, I'll be 53, which is out of Marjorie's range to come to the arts garage. She stopped at 50. And, and while I think that's still young, um, I can see old age for the first time. It's out there, still a little hazy, but I see it. It's coming, if I'm lucky. So I have a renewed sense of urgency. And to be honest with you, I wish I had five lives to live because there is so much that I want to do and experience, so many people I want to learn from, so many people I'd like to help. I think it's important to, to share some things and some lessons. So I'm going to kind of end a little bit with a few from the geniuses that I have counted and studied in the three important areas of, of my life, which is leadership, entrepreneurship, and community. First, leadership. From Churchill and Lincoln, I learned about the power of belief. Churchill's belief that England would never be defeated, and Lincoln's belief in our better angels. Failure was not an option to Churchill because he knew failure to beat the Nazis meant certain death for his country and the values that shaped Western civilization. Lincoln understood his weaknesses and sought to build a team that bolstered his blind spots. He was a strong enough leader and a secure enough person to surround himself with people who held different views. What a concept. I'm no Lincoln or Churchill, but I believe that leaders at all levels of life can learn from their example. I did not fight a world or a civil war when I served as mayor, but I was challenged, as we all are, by events that are out of our control, the ones that you don't see coming. My biggest challenge was trying to keep our city together in the wake of a tragic shooting that took the life of a 15-year-old boy named Gerard Miller. Gerard was shot and killed by a rookie police officer outside of a school dance in the southwest section of our city. There is no playbook uh, when these tragedies happen. And so you have to rely on your team and your own inner reserves in order to keep the community from spiraling out of control. Gerard was shot exactly 10 years before Trayvon Martin was killed by a neighborhood watch volunteer in Sanford, Florida. And we all saw what happened in Ferguson and Baltimore after Freddie Gray. My best advice to any of you who might face a similar challenge is to channel Lincoln and Churchill to reach deep and lead with your heart. I had a 15-year-old daughter at the time. She's 27 now and a teacher. Uh, so Gerard's death was something that struck me very deeply because I could not imagine losing my child in such a way or in any way for that matter. And so I followed my heart. I met with everyone who would see me and I absorbed the anger, the love, the pain, the hurt, all of which was directed at what I symbolized at the time, the mayor of our city and all that title implied. And I realized it wasn't me who was being yelled at by, by some, and in many ways it wasn't me who was being hugged by others. I was a receptacle for the slew of emotions that we were all experiencing. 
So I will tell you that it is a strange job when in the course of a day you are told that you are evil and you are told that you are loved. Uh, we made a choice to survive during that tough time. We made a choice not to destroy what had been built here. That choice was possible in Delray because we made the investment in community that places like Ferguson didn't. That was our genius. Some of us grew closer, a few of us grew apart, but none of us emerged from the experience unchanged. We learned to face the anger and the pain and the heartache with heart and the compassion. Uh, we learned to be a village. Great leaders, great mayors work to make their communities more caring, inclusive, and collaborative. They seek to unify, not divide. They seek to create a reservoir of goodwill, which makes it possible to weather any storm. Lessons from entrepreneurs. This is where you find a slew of geniuses. Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Seth Godin, Richard Branson. The list of entrepreneurial genius just goes on and on. And the common thread that I see in them is fire. They have a fire. They all have a fire to see their vision come to life. They have an ability to not only dream, but to execute. They know how to build teams. They know how to scale. They know how to market. They, they, they make us long for things we, we never knew we wanted. They blaze a path. They are mavericks. They are originals. So uh, the longer I'm in business, the more projects and entrepreneurial endeavors that I'm exposed to or involved with, which range from everything from hot sauce and beverages to uh, restaurants and real estate and whatever is going to be waiting for me at the office when I get back, the more I realize um, how much I don't know. And I become comfortable by understanding that that's OK. Uh, because we can learn from the entrepreneur. We can see the common threads, their ability to take risks, their vision, their belief in their ideas, their passion to bring those ideas into the world. And if we dig deep, we realize that there are virtually no overnight successes. There are always obstacles, always challenges, always setbacks, but the ones who make it are always the ones who persevere. Celsius, which is a beverage company that I'm involved with, um, just announced a record-setting quarter. Uh, an overnight success, a decade in the making. Um, there are no shortcuts. It's not a straight path. Uh, hang on is the best advice I can give people, or fail fast, which is OK. Learn and do something else. Each of us has the ability to be resilient. Grit is what succeeds even more than genius. In my community work, I was fortunate to be exposed to three geniuses in my community life. Two mentored me, and one married me. So, my two mentors were uh, former police chief um, Rick Overman, who I write about extensively in the book. He was the best manager slash leader I've ever observed up close. His genius, and I think it was genius, was his incredible ability to inspire and empower his staff to do amazing things. He trusted his people to go out into the community and solve complex problems. And he was skilled at building a reservoir of goodwill in communities that were really hard to reach. When he came to Delray, our police department was probably the biggest issue in town. Within a year, it was arguably our biggest strength. And the work of that department paved the way for everything else we see. It, paved them, it made it safe, safe for success and safe for investment. There is no Delray uh, as we know it without Rick Overman. His success formula, empower others in your organization, and you'll soar. Mayor Tom Lynch was another civic genius. He put the city on a track that enabled success and enabled guys like me to move the ball forward. Tom was an astute businessman. He was big into policy and very sure of his instincts and philosophy. I saw genius in him. I thought he believed in this place when others didn't, and it made all the difference. He was the one who sat me down at the old Annex restaurant, which doesn't exist anymore, and encouraged me to be involved. Geniuses inspire, and that conversation has fueled the last 20 years of my life. His success formula, government can and should be entrepreneurial, take some risks, make it happen. And finally, there's my wife, Diane, who's somewhere out there in the crowd over there, uh, who led our planning department and our uh, CRA, which wrote the, writes the big checks to the arts garage, um, <laughs> to New Heights. 
She was a managerial genius, she, uh, able to motivate staff, manage a board, navigate politics and race relations. She's very smart, has terrible taste in men, but, <laughs> but she's very smart in all other areas. I would label her a genius because she was able to see the forest through the trees and able to focus on the big picture and the details too. Not too many people can do that, it's usually one or the other. She's also able to tolerate me, uh, and not too many people can do that either over a long period of time, which requires a very special level of genius. Um, her success formula, never take your eye off the big picture, adopt a vision, and get it done. Relentlessly implement. Uh, I want to conclude our Morning of Genius with a real quick diversion to music because that means the world to me. Um, it's got me through tough times, it's inspired me to take chances, it's motivated me, uh, it's made good times better. Um, we talked a little bit about Bruce Springsteen and, and how his music has inspired me in my civic life, in my business life, and even my family life. Um, his music is about breaking free of shackles and expectations of holding on to our dreams, even when, especially when, they are challenged. Not all the characters in his songs make it, but all are fighters, and in my darkest moments, facing cash flow issues in business, trying to keep a city from imploding, I have found salvation, solace, and hope in his words and music. I think we were both born to run. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that one. Um, I'm also a huge Beatles fan. Since the age of nine, I was six when they broke up, so I feel like I was born 10 years too, too late to, to appreciate them when they first were here. Um, their genius can be summed up in five words, which in and of itself is genius. And that is, all you need is love. And I think that is a perfect sentiment on which to end. I thank you all for being here. Thank Yulia, who held my hand through this, and Amber and Nicole. Thanks for coming. We did it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give me the pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.